Hello my fruits, something different for you today. I wanted to do a guide to all the royal engagement rings from recent memory. So I've picked about 15 different royal ladies and we're just going to have a whiz through and touch on each member of the royal family or those who married into the royal family and see what they wore for their engagement. So I'm not going to delve into huge detail with all of them, just it's an opportunity to share with you a bit of eye candy to see the gemstones that were chosen. Spoiler alert, they're mainly diamonds and sapphires. I was actually hoping to see a, a wider range of jewels, but they are the two favorites, uh, with a few little extras thrown in here and there. But we spoke yesterday about Diana's engagement ring, and I mentioned the fact that I don't like it. I just don't like it. And I was so surprised to find that many of you chimed in agreement with me. But I thought we could have some fun, look through, and I'd be so interested to hear your comments to see which one's your favourite, and I'll share my favourite with you towards the end. We'll start with Her Majesty, and her engagement ring is a three-carat brown solitaire with five smaller stones set on each shoulder. Prince Philip designed this ring in collaboration with the jewellers, Philip Antrobus Limited, and they'd been recommended by his uncle, Earl Mountbatten, because he was fond of designing jewellery pieces himself for his wife Edwina. The diamonds are actually taken from Prince Philip's mother's tiara, Princess Alice of Battenberg, and the stones that were left over were made into a bracelet, which was part of his wedding gift to her. The three-carat gemstone is relatively modest for a princess, but it was said to reflect the mood of Britain in that post-war era. And the wedding band you see, like many of the royal wedding bands, was formed from a nugget of Welsh gold. But the Queen's is also believed to bear a secret inscription on the inside of the ring that nobody knows, aside from three people, the Queen, Prince Philip, and the engraver. So I expect she's probably the only one left now that knows the secret. We're moving in no particular order, so now we're going to go on to Sarah, Duchess of York, better known as Fergie, and we have a red stone for a red head. An oval ruby surrounded by a halo of ten diamonds, arranged on a yellow gold band, very similar in style to Diana's design, which was of the era, but not really so desirable in modern times. She kept wearing this ring for 11 years after her separation, and I believe she stopped wearing it in 2003. I don't know if it's pop popped up again since then, but perhaps she pawned it. You know what Fergie's like. Her daughter Beatrice went for a quite edgy, contemporary design. Sean Lean's famous for his darker, romantic designs, otherworldly creations for McQueen. And he designed this ring in collaboration with husband Eduardo. It features a two and a half carat round brilliant cut stone, flanked by smaller diamonds and a tapered baguette on either side, set in platinum with diamond parve extending halfway down the band. Edo wanted a fusion of two elements, his love of art deco and Beatrice's love of Victorian style, and this mixes both of those aesthetics. You can see the six prongs here holding the centre stone in place have been chiselled to fine points, and that's a nod to the signature style of the designer, who uses a sort of talon motif. Jack Brooksbank posed to our Eugenie in 2018, and this striking design features a very rare type of sapphire, the Pad Parasha sapphire, which gives off a sort of peachy, pinky orange glow rather like a glorious sunset, and you can see the centre stone is surrounded by a cluster of diamonds. It's said to have been influenced by the style of her mother's ring, dear old Fergie, but reimagined to be more desirable and contemporary. Edo said that it changes colour when it hits certain nights, just like Eugenie. How romantic. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, is not considered royal by those of us in the know, but she did have a royal wedding, so she's included here. Uh, the announcement was made in 2017 and her ring is made up of three stones, a three carat cushion cut centre diamond that came from Botswana because it's a very important place to Harry and Meghan. They hold it very close to their hearts. And that centre stone surrounded by two round diamonds which are estimated to be just under a carat each and those two diamonds were taken from Diana's legacy collection. It was set on a gold band originally, but there were adjustments made to it some time later. Meghan decided that she wanted it altered by celebrity designer Lorraine Schwartz. So it was resized and reset and replaced with a thinner yellow gold band that's set with micro parve diamonds. 
And now she wears it as a trilogy. She has the gold wedding band, the engagement ring that's been resized and reset with the micro pave, and an eternity ring as well, which was also designed by that celebrity designer, Lorraine Schwartz. So she obviously had a vision in mind for the three of them. It, it uh, is inlaid with birthstones relating to Harry, Meghan and Archie of Peridot, Emerald and Sapphire. You wouldn't want to lose any of these gemstones down the lavatory, would you, my dear? Can you imagine when she's wiping her ass? Sophie, Countess of Wessex, married in 1999, and it's a two-carat oval diamond flanked by two smaller heart-shaped diamond gemstones, and it's set on a white gold band. Camilla's wedding to Charles was announced in 2005, and the only announcement that was made about the ring was that it was a royal family heirloom, but nobody said from whence it came. We've never been provided with the details of its provenance, but everyone believes that it is from the Queen Mother's collection. In fact, there's been a photograph or two where they say the Queen Mother wore this ring or a version of it in the 80s, but it hasn't been confirmed as far as I know. You might have more information than me, so do feel free to fill me in. But it's believed to be from her collection. It's on platinum with an Art Deco design. There's a five carat emerald cut diamond at the center and it's flanked by three diamond baguettes on either side. And she pairs it with another one of those simple Welsh gold bands. And Princess Royal has been married twice, so she got two rings. Both of them are fairly dull, I'm afraid. I don't like them, but you might. Uh, firstly, she married Mark Phillips and she had a blue center stone with a diamond each side. That was in 1973, but by 1992, she was added again, this time with Commander Timothy Lawrence. Uh, and she wore, uh, again, a large oval sapphire in Cabochon setting. So very imaginative there. New man, more or less the same ring. The difference here was that it was flanked by a trio of diamonds on either side. I'm not going to dwell too much on the Diana Kate ring because we all know what it looks like. It's a salon sapphire cluster ring. And it was possibly inspired by a brooch that was gifted to Queen Victoria by Prince Albert before they got married. And she loved it so much, she used it at her wedding as the something blue, you know, something borrowed, something blue. She wore it there. It's handed down and the Queen's been seen wearing it a lot during her life. So Charles would have seen it a lot. And so the whispers are that that was what influenced their joint decision. Although they say Diana picked it from the catalogue. Uh, which was unusual at the time. You didn't usually go for rings that could be bought by general members of the public, but that's what happened. And Fergie followed suit. But several years later, Diana did customise it a little bit because she added six prongs to the setting. The ring was a little bit large for Catherine when she assumed stewardship of it, so some small platinum beads have been added inside the band to reduce its diameter. They do that instead of breaking it and resoldering the band. Princess Alexandra is the Queen's cousin, and she got engaged in 1962 to Sir Angus Ogilvy. She wore an oval sapphire flanked by two diamonds, but it appears to have changed down the line uh, to something more chunky, a chunkier gold band, without the diamonds, which I think is such a shame. I think it was much nicer before from what I could see. It's actually quite difficult to find images of these older members of the family to, from times gone by and the rings they had. They weren't especially well documented from what I can see. And we see a large cabochon sapphire. Cabochon means it's highly polished but not faceted. To my eye it looks like a completely different stone to the original but perhaps you can tell me. Catherine, Duchess of Kent, got engaged in 1961 to Prince Edward, the Duke of Kent, the Queen's first cousin, and she sported an emerald sapphire. They're all bloody sapphires, aren't they? No emeralds, no aquamarines. A friend of mine's got a really beautiful aquamarine engagement ring. But never mind. But the sapphire was said to be a subtle nod to her new mother-in-law, Princess Marina, because she bucked that trend of sapphires within the Kent family. I'm afraid I couldn't find any images in colour, so I just have to imagine that. Birgitta, the Duchess of Gloucester, is a Danish member of the British royal family and her engagement was announced in February 72 and she married in July of the same year. She wore a wide and intricate silver ring set with coral. So at last, something a little out of the ordinary 
although no pictures seem to have survived, and the ones that do aren't very clear. There is some footage on YouTube I've seen, but again, they do no close-ups or anything. She married Prince Richard, also the Duke of Gloucester, another cousin of the Queen, and he was a budding architect at the time who was studying architecture, so he, like a lot of these uh, royal men, took an interest in the design of the ring. And this is a mystery. She seems to have discarded that ring because it's evolved over time into this flowery affair. Maybe she didn't like his design or went off coral or it went out of fashion, who knows, but it seems to have been replaced. Marie Christine married Prince Michael of Kent in 1978, so she became Princess Michael of Kent. She married Prince Michael a month after the annulment of her first marriage. The Pope annulled her first marriage to Thomas Truebridge, who was an English banker. And she's often seen wearing colourful stones. She likes to wear a collection of various coloured stones together, but this particular one was set on a yellow gold band and it's diamond and sapphire sat next to each other. The stones belonged to Prince Michael's mother, Marina. And Princess Michael seems to enjoy stacking the rings because she'll often wear an emerald and diamond above it. So we do get to see one emerald. And she'll often wear a similarly styled ruby on the other hand. Autumn Phillips is now divorced from our handsome Peter, quite sadly, but they married in 2008. And she wore an oval diamond in the centre, with two diamonds either side, set on a platinum band. And there were diamond baguettes as well at the side. And what better way to show it off than on Peter's thigh? Zara Phillips was engaged to Mike Tyndall in 2010. I think she took her tongue piercing out for the occasion, didn't she? I hope so. That was not her most royal moment, I'm afraid. There we go. Uh, she wore a split platinum band with several parve set diamonds and a single solitaire. A solitaire's still called solitaires when they're not solitaire, you know, when they're surrounded by other, a few other stones. I wouldn't have thought so, but that's how it's been described anyway. It has a deliberately low profile setting so that she can still take part in her equestrian events. You know, it was thoughtfully designed so that it didn't rise up too high and get in the way when she's riding. So which ring was your favourite? I would love to know which ring you liked, which stone you'd choose, because I find it very interesting. I love all stones, but if I had to pick a favourite for me, if I was to be princess, future queen, bride of Big Willy, well, you know I love all stones. I could barely choose, but I would go, and I know it's quite boring, but I would go with a diamond. Uh, I would always choose a diamond. For one reason, diamonds go with everything. You know, you don't have to colour coordinate. And secondly, the brilliance, the dazzling fire of a diamond is so breathtaking. It's hard to compete with. You can stare at the various colours all day, but there's something about that fire and brilliance of a truly bedazzling diamond that just takes the breath away. It is very royal, so I would go with a diamond. My own personal taste is for a very simple rock that is presented in a very simple way. And I don't like anything too large or too small. It's got to be just the right size. And I think I've mentioned before that this uh, orange ring here is more or less what I'd go for. I'd want it reimagined with uh, a top designer, of course, my dear, and I'd have a much lower profile. This is much too high. But I like the fact that it looks rather antique, but very simple, simple band. I like the size of the stone. I like the fact there's only a few prongs. Uh, that's the kind of size though that I go for. And it's just simple round. I wouldn't want, I don't want anything oval. And I like emerald cut, cushion cut. I like them, but not for, for a solitaire, for a solitary stone. I just want a round, rock that shines and dazzles and has very little accompaniment you know no parve no clusters nothing like that and please don't think that i'm besmirching anybody else's engagement rings because they should all be tailored and suited to the individual and i love them all well i mean i don't there's, there's lots that i hate but you know what i mean <laughs> and which is my favorite out of all the royal ladies we've seen today well i'm giving that to Beatrice! Yes, Beatrice! You know, they get a bit of flack here and there, don't they, for their unusual 
wardrobe choices. But hey, at least they have creative minds. At least they're daring. And I'd much rather have a daring royal than a boring one most of the time. So I'll give them props for that. But that ring of Beatrice, I mean, Eugenie's was lovely as well, but Beatrice's uh, was probably my favorite out of the lot of them if I had to choose one for myself. I might get rid of some of the stones around the side, but I do like that marriage of the Art Deco and the Victoriana together. Thanks for dropping in to see me, my fruits, and I look forward to seeing you in the next broadcast.